a very jugar way of how we go about blood sugar and insulin levels this is my jadu ka magic petara over here antioxidants and has several benefits for your heart insulin spike and helps maintain stable blood sugar levels when i cycle on and off of caffeine in bengali we call it shana unless i'm sponsored by them that will hopefully at some later point of time but one day when the budget comes hopefully as a chindi person shell out hundreds of bucks shrimp is a very lean pure source of protein jay cutler once said as bodybuilders we eat for function not for taste and that's it wala master chef in the house Every ex single exercise needs to have a purpose behind that. But the split I am following right now is all things that are there in the trainer's pitada. During the lift, this hunchback does not happen. To my main top set, Nara is giving me shamsha. Against which direction are you generating force? Pronated grip, your supinated grip, and your neutral grip. Imagine a crescendo in a music. When you're bowling in cricket, you pull the non-working hand down fast. From this to this. From this to this in a sport like cricket, कोई कोई चीज़ नज़ाकत से करो अच्छा फल देगा. If you know the biomechanics, if you know how muscle work, you can make anything work out. Keep cool. Welcome back to the channel. We have a raw upper body workout planned ahead today. We're going to start out with showing you my breakfast and. It's going to be the muscle building smoothie recipe that you've all been waiting for. So for my breakfast, I've been used to eating the same breakfast for the last it's been what almost from 2017. I've been eating the same thing, and depending on whether I'm in a surplus or in a deficit, I adjust the recipe accordingly. And I'll be showing you everything that I put into this smoothie. This makes for a whole complete meal, which will keep you full for three to four hours, and suffices for every single macro and micronutrient. Taking a lot of time to perfect this, and this is what suits my body and feels the best for me before my workout. Debatable topic, and some of you might skip this, but I prefer to have raw egg whites. A lot of science research articles will tell you against having egg whites or something, but I've been having this for the last six, seven years, and it hasn't caused me any issue. And that's how I like to go about things. Getting in my seven into Six, seven into four, twenty-eight grams of protein early in the morning from the egg whites itself. First thing I will I put in this recipe is some cocoa powder. The cocoa powder is full of rich antioxidants and has several benefits for your heart and your overall health. The next thing that I am going to be putting here is a cinnamon powder. Little more than a dash. Now, while cinnamon not only improves the taste, it has multiple benefits. If we talk bodybuilding, one of the most important components we need to take, be mindful of, is blood sugar and insulin levels. So, to put it in simple words, whatever you are ingesting throughout the day, if your blood sugar levels are spiking haywire, your body won't be able to absorb it to its fullest potential. In that case. Why something like cinnamon comes in handy is it helps you prevent an insulin spike and helps maintain stable blood sugar levels. A stable blood sugar levels will mean better absorption of all the protein you are consuming throughout the day. Now every gym rat's favorite will be able to see how many of these I have stacked up all over my house. Just the Nescafe cups. These must be over I don't know countless. But I have reduced my caffeine intake these days in my early teens. I have used, misabused pre-workouts up until like every single pre-workout. This was going to be a separate video one day. I've tried every single thing under the roof, and my caffeine tolerance used to be so high at one point of time. Like 400, 500 milligrams used to be nothing to me. But coming from that, that used to cause several issues, and I've slowly reduced my caffeine intake over the years till the point where I even go some days via. Like without caffeine at all, I cycle on and off of caffeine. I do a very minimal amount. I'll do two spoons of coffee. This will be my only caffeine serving throughout the whole day. So till now we are done with our coffee, our cocoa powder, and our cinnamon powder. Next in line is going to be the healthy fats. Earlier I used to prefer having peanut butter, but eventually when I started reading more about nutrition. I wanted to switch to healthier alternative of nuts, which provide more nutrient value as well. So I have switched out peanut butter for almonds, cashews, and walnuts. 
my jadoo ka magic pit ara over here i'm going to show you a very jugar way of how we go about things i'll roughly put there's no real calculation as to the, this how many i put it depends on how big the almonds are i'm putting 1 2 3 4 5 almonds here today and i don't know what you call this in hindi but in bengali we call them shanashi chimti 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 right to take this break and crush makes it easier to blend i don't want to break the blender ka rotating device because that's our life if we break that breakfast is going to be an issue is it right up angle in but done with the almonds i don't need to reeducate all of you on the benefits of what having almonds cashews and walnuts do to your body if you have the luxury of making the switch i would ask you guys to try it out making the switch from peanut butter which is considered a bodybuilding staple but has less other nutrients in general you can switch to better options which are available i want to do about these many walnuts walnuts i'll just put whole they'll blend very easily and around the same amount of cashews i'm not doing a very in depth macro breakdown of what everything entails because i think that might be a separate video altogether but if we are to go about this this would i i you roughly used to consume around 16 grams of peanut butter which would give me around 10 to 12 grams of fat this might be a little bit over but i don't mind that since it's giving me so many other vital nutrients now the most important the protein i'm not going to show you the brand because it's like asking me whoever asks me which brand of protein do you take unless i'm sponsored by them that will hopefully at some later point of time but like it's like asking to me which brand of salt do you consume so for me there's so many other variables to look into rather than just bhai protein kaisa result de raha hai your training your training is there your recovery is there your overall nutrition is there supplementation plays a very minor role in that so whichever suits your budget and whichever suits to your digestion i would advise you to stick to that similarly like i spoke about with pre workout since 2016 every single brand out there have tried it all and it doesn't really make any major difference if your training and nutrition is on point supplementation as the word suggests is just a supplement to your overall building pillars and foundations we need to almost one rounded scoop It's going to be quite sweet as it is because of the protein, but for the nutrient aspect of it, I'll put in some honey. Now again, I think there might be people who say in the comments, "Oh my God, be protests." In the comment section, saying, "Ah, this is not pure. You should use raw honey and everything." One day when the budget comes, hopefully. Little dash, not going over because we are going to have one more sweet element over here, which is going to be. another bodybuilding staple and if as a hard gainer is a as a beginner you're struggling with two to three of these a day you will be golden banana again endless amount of vitamins simple carbs before the workout to fuel your workout and since i'm going to be mixing it with another bodybuilding staple no magic recipe here oats it's going to provide a wonderful balance between complex carbohydrates from the oats simple carbohydrates from the bananas and the fats which are going to slow down the absorption of this whole entire meal so this will last you around 3 to 4 hours minimum guaranteed depending on what your current macros are you can alter the quantity of oats if you are on a bulk you can easily add two bananas if you are on a bulk you can easily add two two and a half scoops of oats i'm just going with this is a 130 gram scoop i'm just going on with 130 gram scoop over here This is roughly going to provide me around 27 grams of carbs. Like I've done this recipe so many times over the years, the macros are almost learned by heart. But still, this is this overall smoothie is going to be roughly around 700 calories with around 50 grams of protein and the remainder of the other macro macronutrients. If we do a macronutrient breakdown some other day, I'll explain to you in detail what every single component brings to the table. And lastly, this is another switch that I made. so dairy would often times cause some bloating to me so that's why and i i can't as a chindi person shell out 
hundreds of bucks for almond milk and cashew milk everything so the best alternative for me would be to cut out a little bit of lactose might sound like a bit of an anti moron that okay you're not consuming lactose but you're having whey protein whey has lactose for some reason whey suits me and a lot of milk early in the morning would cause me some bloating so i have made the switch to lactose free milk very easily available not overpriced made by amul taste of india you'll find it every single where this 250 ml carton this will last me 2 days this is just for 25 bucks so this the milk i'll weigh out if you're lifting a food weighing scale is a must to have i'll weigh out around 45 to 50 ml of milk this barely has 2-3 grams of carbs, 2-3 grams of protein. I'm not doing it for the protein. I'm doing it just as a lubricant, so to speak, so that the whole smoothie binds and comes together. Like again, I've tried out multiple shakers and blenders over the years, but then again, it's the trusty old Bajaj which does the gets the job done. That's it. Voila, Master Chef in the house. Breakfast is ready and served in matter of what barely five minutes. You're getting in all the necessary macronutrients. You're getting in the healthy carbs. You're getting in your micros. You're getting in your fruits. And this is a very versatile recipe. You can use it as a base to customize around this. If you're cutting, you can reduce the amount of carbs that you put in it. If you're bulking, you can increase the amount of carbs. If you don't want to have it in the form of a smoothie. You can make it the same oats recipe in the form of a oats bowl. You can microwave the same and have the eggs separately cooked. If you can't eat eggs, if you are vegetarian, you can just do the oats on its own. Make it your own, but keep the fundamentals and basics the same. Nutrition is very simple if you don't overcomplicate things. Once you just start looking at nutrition with a broader horizon, it just makes things so much simpler. Also, the daily essentials which we cannot avoid, which I make sure. I'm consuming on a daily basis your multivitamins and your omega threes, your fish oil. I don't really eat much of fish, oily fish in general, so I think that might be lacking. And multivitamin for general overall health. These two daily essentials. Since I do intermittent fasting, I don't do breakfast in the morning. It's one thirty right now. That's when I had my breakfast. I'll be training an hour after this. and then i'll i carry my post workout meal along with me as well so i don't have a protein post workout since after i'm done with my workout i have a big meal and then i get to to the floor to training my clients this has been the same lunch that i've been having for the last 5 years now the taste buds are almost immune but i like it and as J the famous bodybuilder the legend jay cutler once said as bodybuilders we eat for function not for taste No matter how many years of doing this, I still make sure it's down there to the exact T. One hundred and fifty grams of rice. Depending on if I'm bulking, which I barely do these days because modeling won't allow me to put on size. One hundred and fifty grams of rice for about thirty-five grams of carbs over there. And my protein of choice post-workout is shrimp. I have shrimp shrimp on a daily basis. Nothing foiled. None of that. No salt. No spice, any of that. It's just cooked in a normal homely Bengali style way. The so shrimp I feel suits me a lot better post workout because chicken takes a little longer time to digest. Shrimp is a very lean, pure source of protein. So 80 grams of shrimp will yield you about 21, 22 grams of protein with almost zero carbs and zero fat, and it keeps your stomach light. And especially if you are dieting down and staying lean, the I don't I haven't read any science behind it, but I've been doing this from the time when I got sent to single digit body fat back in 2019. So any food which would cause me any bloat at the end of a cut, it would affect my overall waist size. So in order to keep a very narrow, tiny waist, stick to foods. That's why you see a lot of bodybuilders eating fish. So fish personally doesn't agree with me. The shrimp suits me better. So I've been sticking to this for a long period of time, and of course, you cannot avoid your greens. I have some bhindi on the side. So that's the post-workout meal. Rice and shrimp will remain constant. Whatever vegetable is made at home, I'll have a portion of that. So fun little fact which you guys might be wondering is why why am I wearing this Gold's Gym T-shirt? Neither do I work there, nor do I train there. But this holds a very special significance. 
this was given gifted to me by one of my clients who then shifted to the states when he came back this is from the original mecca of bodybuilding gold's gym venice beach california so one day with you guys support hopefully we'll get to shoot a vlog in the og mecca of bodybuilding with with the same camera with the same person but with a much bigger audience and with all your love and support splits upper lower full body splits push pull legs over the years i've tried them all but the split i'm following right now is push pull legs and an upper body day funnily enough like as much as i love training legs and love training squats apparently my legs were a little too big for modeling so to make yourself comfortable on the ramp where the garments flow on you you can't have big bulging quads so over the years i had to reduce the amount of volume i give to my legs since i was very quad dominant and that's why one less leg day these days when training a four day split what finds major importance is your programming so i don't have the luxury of training six days a week i'm not giving that as an excuse like despite being inside the gym for more than six days a week training my clients majority of my time is devoted to training my clients and trying to manage time in between that so if i am sore if i can't demonstrate or exercise properly because of my soreness or because of my own issues i think i am holding back my potential as an educator so that's why i try to fit in my workout in an optimized manner in an in a four day split and today will be an upper body day so i'll take you i'll give you a little brief as to how i program the workout how i make selections of certain exercises which plays a vital role when you are play when you are have to select certain movements you can't just do movements in a haywire manner just because you know that these exercises go well with certain muscle groups you have to think and pick exercises wisely because let's say you're doing a set of 6 or 7 exercises every ex single exercise needs to have a purpose behind that so i'll just be going to the warm up right now we're going to be starting off with some trap bar deadlifts since on my back day pull day this week i did not do deadlifts so i'm going to begin with trap bar deadlifts and take you through proceedings from there run free and dive into the sky here go You don't really need to necessarily follow a set rep range when you're going through your mobility drills. With years of practice, you'll slowly start to understand when on good days when you're lifting heavy, when you're lifting well, the lifts are being performed in an efficient manner. What an engaged muscle feels like. So during your mobility drills, you try to strive for that same sensation. some days you might reach that same same sensation at 5 reps some days it might take you 30 so as they say very basics mind muscle connection try to feel what you're trying to engage you can and that muscle can develop and generate rather that output so much more efficiently bands rollers straps wraps bands belts all things that are there in a trainer's pitara these are very vital and i love the use of bands for the multiple benefits they provide for today's session we are going to be starting off with trap bar deadlifts so engagement of the glutes plays a major role in that the various drills you can perform to engage your glutes two of them are up on my channel already in the form of shorts today i'm going to be doing a variation of a standing clamshell will help me engage my medias so during the lockout of the deadlift the glutes can fire more efficiently since the glutes are the biggest muscles in the body if the glutes fire correctly the most common notion that you'll be hearing during a deadlift is lower back mein lag jayega lower back mein lagega nahi agar glutes engage hai very underrated but 
but something every lifter should have in their arsenal. Next to engage my upper back, I'm going to be doing some cable pull up parts to warm up my shoulder joint, my rear delts. And engaged upper back will help me perform my retraction better. So during the lift, this hunchback does not happen. And I can feel the my upper back muscles working when I'm performing my retraction. Next biggest muscle groups we need to target is during our warm-up, engaging the lats. I just like to do a few reps of these standing rows. I perform the movement in a very controlled and efficient manner, driving my elbows into my hips, trying to get a good squeeze on my lats. So during the movement, I can engage them better. This will be preceded by the pull-ups of course. I generally feel if my lats are engaged prior, I can feel them much better during my pull-up. We're not trying to enter a pull-up contest where the goal is to do maximum number of reps. We're trying to engage the muscle optimally to be used during the movement. So an engaged muscle will always produce greater, greater output. So all of these will be part of my pre-activation drill before I approach my main lift. While we might be doing 6 or 7 main exercises, it will all be preceded by these small micro movements which I do not really count. I have grown up training in a powerlifting style so you will see a lot of that reflected in my training. But during when I perform deadlifts, I like to follow a very explosive movement. My philosophy in believing this is one, the love for powerlifting aside, if we are trying to do something, we should try to look up at the best people on the planet who do these who do these lifts, right? So I don't like to necessarily deadlift in the bodybuilding style where you slowly squeeze your back on top. If I try to do weightlifting, if I try to learn a clean and jerk, I try to learn it from Olympic lifters. If I try to learn a deadlift, my philosophy is Deadlifts are performed the strongest by powerlifters on the planet. They deadlift the most amount of weight, powerlifters and strongmen. So I'll try to mimic up their style. I'm a big believer and a great learner of Louis Simmons and the West Side Barbell Method. So I study their methods a lot and I try to implement the same during my training. So when I perform my lifts, you'll try to see a lot of explosiveness in the movements. While I generally perform deadlifts barefoot, I am performing it with my lifting shoes which is going to create a slight deficit but I don't really mind that a little more engagement of my hamstrings since my hamstrings were a little under trained this week so I don't mind that and especially with the fact that I am training legs once a week during my upper body days I like to throw in a few multi-joint compound movements so my lower body gets engaged in the same time as well. like to do a couple of pause reps at the very end. These pause reps help me feel my lats better and from this point generate the complete explosiveness that I need on top. Weight free is good today. I think we are going to move a little weight today. So I've spent most of my training career in a gym where the weight used to be in pounds and then I used to lift a lot heavier. You only used to go by one plate and half plates. So the math for all the gym people who might be knowing is 135, 225, 315, 405. So there's no smaller jumps, it's just 20, 20, 20 ka jumps we are taking. So the initial jumps up to a working weight are going to be a little bigger. As we draw towards our main working set of the day, the jumps are going to be smaller and with small increments. Let's say right now I'm taking a 20 kg jump. Based on how this feels, the next set I might be taking another 20 or a 15 kg jump and working up to my main top set, the jumps are going to get smaller 
and the number of reps are going to be get less. Let's say I am doing a top set with 160 kgs today of three sets of three reps. My last warm up rest set would be somewhere with a 150 kgs where I perform one rep. Would have liked that to move a little more faster. So based on how this set felt, I wouldn't take a 20 kg jump the next set, I'll probably do a 15 kg jump and do my next warm up set with 130. Small trick to use when you're putting on plates is, just put a small plate over here, slide the bigger plates on top, it slides right in, very simple. You don't need to pick up the entire bar. Use this little trick. I think you must have seen this before. A lot of people are explaining it, but it makes things a lot more simpler. Nara is giving me shamasha. This move all right. I'm going to. So these days I don't really follow a set program like I earlier used to when I used to do powerlifting. But the basics and fundamentals of the concept of a top set and accessory movements has always remained. So I'll stick to that. Let's add on another 15 and see how that feels. Nothing more sweet than the sound of metal on metal. That's the sound we live for. Just got these new straps. I always like to use straps during pulling movement. Takes out the grip strength so you can fully maximize your pulling abilities. So the leather strap for a change I mostly use Kapraka straps but this feels good. Let's see how long it lasts. Usually my straps last me a good one and a half, two years. Let's see how this goes. I'm going to go touch and go on this. I won't go stop and go. Felt heavier than I expected. Little bit of knee cave in. Would have liked to see a bit more tightness. I'm going to go for one more set on this. I just take back my review of the strap. Length is too short, this just arms just keep slipping. I usually use the Kapraka straps which have longer limbs. When you wrap it around, it will slip. Okay, you have good days, you have bad days, that's it. I'm done with my top set, two sets of three reps. I'm going to be moving on to the next exercise. Let's do a 1999 chest dominant pressing motion. And we'll superset that with a vertical pulling motion. Before I start my pressing motion, all of you guys must be aware of how important rotator cuff health is. And you must be seeing a lot of people in the gym doing internal and external rotations with a dumbbell. But my objectification in that is, again my famous lines which I like to use, line of action. Whenever you perform a certain movement, just think about against which direction are you generating force. 
if you are holding a dumbbell like this and you want to perform external rotation right you want to resist against this line but what is the dumbbell doing the dumbbell is just pulling you down so you are not generating force against this direction you are generating force against the vertical plane of gravity which is pulling you down 9.8 meter per second square you are basically just doing a bicep flexion exercise you might feel your rotator cuff working but you can optimize that better similarly when you are doing external rotation the same thing again i want to be promote resisting a line of action which is resisting this plane right the horizontal plane but again if i'm holding a dumbbell like this line of action of gravity is acting downward i'm again doing a same bicep flexion exercise so is my external rotation really being tested i think not we have better options right in front of you use cables where is the line of action happening right here it's happening in a horizontal plane so if i do my external rotation right here which is very important before any pressing movement to look after your rotator cuff health my preferred medium would be this and i urge all of you to think along these lines whenever you are performing any particular motion which is the line of action you are resisting whenever training my upper body workouts i really like the use of supersets it's efficient on time and saves you a lot of energy like it might sound counterintuitive because you might get tired quicker but it makes your workouts get done in a more efficient and time time efficient manner rather so my choice for today would be i'll do a incline dumbbell press for my chest i'll keep the incline at a slightly high angle which will target a little bit of my front delts as well because like i mentioned previously whenever you're making an exercise selection the choice of exercise is going to be limited so in that limited range you have to think of the best possible option you have available i'm going to be supersetting that with a neutral grip lat pull down we can perform pull downs on various grips right these days we have the new mag grips available but the basic gist of it will always remain the same you have your pronated grip your supinated grip and your neutral grip like it's it works in three different planes but for today my choice of action will be the neutral grip which helps me pull in this manner this helps me feel my lats better and compared to my last pulling workout where i did a, a pull down motion and underhand grip it provides a variation as well before i start out with my incline dumbbell presses i'm going to be doing a pre activation movement just to get some blood flowing around my chest i'm going to be doing push ups a lot of you guys might be doing push ups but when you put your mind to it you can feel the muscle contract in a much more efficient manner now when i go down i won't just be going through the motions much rather i'll get into my push up position i'll slowly lower myself into the ground and on the way up my mental cue which i'm going to use is i want to make these mats vibrate I'll go down slow i'll press straight through my palms now i'll imagine i want to bring the mats in together and make them vibrate if you do them with intent i guarantee you 10 to 12 reps you'll experience a pump better than just doing 3 4 sets mindlessly and less reps whatever you do inside the gym do it with intent try to feel and optimize better muscle contractions first warm up set for 12 kg we're going to try for around 15 reps i'll try to keep my elbows tucked in at a 45 degree angle and not let it flare out all the way this will be better for my shoulder health at the very end i like to get in a few unilateral reps so i'll see feel in better control before i go to my heavy sets one lightish set on the lat pull down same as the pre activation 
to get a feeling of the lats. We've already done lat, lat activation movements and we've already done a deadlift, so lats are already warm. But still one warm-up set before going into our heavy working sets. To initiate the motion with a scap depression and go straight down. I won't go back like this. I'll get my elbows right in front and squeeze my lats. I'm going to keep the rest time around 90 seconds to 2 minutes between sets. I'm going to do 3 working sets on both. We did, did 12, so I'm going to take a rather bigger jump. We'll jump next to around 26 kgs. Try to finish up the last 2 sets with 30 kgs. And over there, try for a 12 to 15 rep range. We did 26. We'll try to get in around 10 reps. During pulling motions, the arms and forearms will always be your secondary muscles engaged. So, if you try to take a thumbless grip during the movement instead of a grip with a full thumb, you will eliminate a lot of your forearms being worked. You can think of your arms as just hooks pulling the weight and drive your elbows into your hips where you can engage your lats better and take out a lot of your forearms. Another good option would be the use of straps which I'm going to be using for my next two sets. Next, I'm going to be doing one of my most favorite underrated pieces of equipment in the gym, the landmine setup. Most people do this just for a T-bar row, but the landmine is such a versatile piece of equipment. I, I love using it, it explores the multidimensional abilities of the shoulder. So yeah, I'm going to be demonstrating a, I don't know really how to name it, but a banded lateral landmine press. It's going to be challenging my rotational strength, my pressing strength and my core stability. I intend on dropping a few shots and exercises with what you can do with the landmine. I'll do that very soon. But as of now, we're going to be starting out with this movement. Apart from everything else, the landmine looks very cool. That should be one more reason to try it out. So I'm going to loop the top end of the band on the top of the bar. I'm going to resume a deadlift stance. In a deadlift stance, I'll slowly go down. Imagining to do a lateral deadlift. I'll pick up the bar in a lateral deadlift position and I'll do a press 
transferring my body weight into a forward lunge. It's going to be quick, it's going to be rapid. So watch with great keenness. Why I love the use of bands in all kinds of motions is it adds another dimension to the movement. So if I draw a strength resistance curve, when I press a free weight up on top, up on top, the weight is heaviest over here and press it up, press it up, press it up. When I lock it out, the weight gets lighter on top. What the band allows is for the weight to get heavier on top as you slowly keep pressing. Imagine a crescendo in a music uh, in a, when you're playing a piano. It builds up, builds up, builds up, builds up. You're doing the same thing. As you keep pressing up, the weight gets heavier and you need greater force production on top. So great movement to be used for athletes and for us who are looking to gain hypertrophy benefits out of it. Expand your horizon. There's so much more you can train for your shoulder, especially the most mobile joint of your body than just doing front raises and lateral raises. There's so many explore capabilities you got for your shoulders to explore. So try it out. It'll have multifold benefits and carry over into your other strength movements as well, even if you're not an athlete and doing it purely from a bodybuilding standpoint. We're going to be doing three pyramid sets on the landmine. Since I've already done a pressing movement today, I don't want to be doing a lot of sets on this particular movement, especially a pressing movement since my shoulders have already gotten worked. I like to keep my usual working volume for an upper body workout, no more than 22 to 24 sets, working sets of, of all the movements during the day. This keeps the overall training volume in moderation and allows enough time for recovery. Last set on the landmine, 6 to 8 reps, goal will be to allow optimal weight transfer, bracing the core properly and allow the arms to finish in a dynamic position as possible. Simple cue to use, imagine when you are doing a fast, when you are bowling in cricket, you pull the non-working hand down fast, similarly when you are trying to press forward, you pull the non-working hand down faster, you want to allow your press to be more explosive in nature. Why the landmine is such a brilliant exercise, apparatus of choice rather, especially for sports people. Imagine the sports specific carryover movement an apparatus like this has in a sport like cricket. When you're standing in this position and you're playing a drive in front, you're opening up your foot and you're going through the motion. Over here as well, you start out in a lateral position, you do your optimal weight transfer, you open up your foot and then you press. Not exactly similar, but understand the kinetic chain of the movement from this to this, from this to this. The weight transfer that you're going to be training for, it's a lot of load over here. Cricket bat weights, weighs one tenth of that. If you can generate the same pressing strength through this plane of motion, imagine the carryover that will have into your specific sport. The so landmine, don't be sleeping on this. This particular gym that I'm training at does not have a chest supported rowing machine. But since I've already done deadlifts, and since I've already done the motion on the landmine, my lower back will be a bit fatigued to perform any movements which require me to be bent over. So my movement of choice to be training my rear delts because that's something I'm focusing on from an aesthetic standpoint would be a chest supported high row. I'm going to be flaring my elbows out at a 90 not tucking my elbows in, which is going to be lat focus, but much rather keep my elbows out at a 90 and target my rear delts. So I've done a jogar setup because we live in India and we live in a country like India which is full of jogar. So 
use your mind to it even if your gym does not have a machine if you know the biomechanics if you know how muscle work you can make anything work out of it i keep my chest supported like this retract my shoulder blades flare my elbows out and pull targeting my rear delts Not really going for any set rep range on this. I'm going am rep as many reps as possible, going by feel. Just before I do the next set, I'm going to be doing three sets of this. By the way, I want to explain the concept of a protagonist and antagonist muscle. So, whenever I'm grabbing the bar, I'm grabbing it as lightly as possible because I want to engage my rear delts during the motion. Think of something as simple simple as when you're flexing your bicep. the tricep gets disengaged when i'm flexing my tricep my bicep gets disengaged similarly if i hold the bar too firm and my front delts get engaged my rear delt can't get engaged so on some movements like they say in urdu they use a beautiful word do some movements with nazakat you don't every movement does not need brute strength koi koi cheez nazakat se karo acha fal milega i'm taking a thumbless grip almost grabbing it with the edge of my finger not even grabbing the whole thing hey hey understanding muscle function will make things so simple for you that you don't have to worry about the absence of certain kinds of equipment like this gym does not have a pec deck machine as well but there are certain times where i like to perform the movement a lot at the, at, the, at the very same setup where i did the row like i said i can do a lat focus row as well similarly i just push the bench back a little and boom we have a pec deck setup if you want to use that Not going to be performing a pec deck today. I'm going to be doing a cable crossover. But just start thinking around certain things. You start opening opening up so many opportunities with the limited resources that you have available. No matter where you're training, it really does not take much more than a barbell and iron, but an intent to learn and an intent to train in different ways for you to achieve your dream physique. So we are nearing the end of the workout. We have this is going to be the last movement before we move on to a couple of sets of arms. so my exercise of choice today for my chest isolation would be so my last push day was shoulder dominant that's why i'm not doing any lateral raise or any movement of that sort i'm going to finish off the workout with a chest isolation i'm going to be doing a cable crossover three sets of this we're going to keep the reps relatively high 18 to 20 reps and on the last set we're going to be performing a drop set throughout the motion i'll try to keep my upper body as stable as i can Shoulder blades retracted. I try to bring my arms down and have a mental cue where I want to touch the both of my biceps together. I'll make sure I don't let my shoulders protract forward and let my shoulders hunch, but make a nice contraction and maintain this throughout the motion. the last set we are going to be doing a drop set at the weight we are going to be starting with i try to be looking to get out the max number of reps possible beyond that i'm going to drop the weight and keep on going till as many reps as i can
wasn't counting the number of reps must have exceeded in the ballpark of 40 or 50 but the main objective of this during the last set is to burn out the muscle completely and make it fatigued tear the most amount of muscle fiber and hopefully aim to create the best amount of hypertrophy possible as a finisher i'm going to be finishing off with some arms we're going to be doing some cable reverse curls supersetting that with a tricep press down and as a last making it a tricep i'm going to be doing some hanging knee ups biceps triceps and abs covered with one move less time more efficiency as i always try to promote why i'm doing the reverse curl is it's going to be targeting the brachialis and the long head of my biceps throughout the other movements that i have performed in my previous push day i've already targeted the, the short head of the bicep and during my last in my last pull day rather and on my last push day i've already targeted the long head doing skull crusher movements and overhead movements that's why i'm targeting the short and medial head with the press downs today three sets 10 to 12 reps on this 10 to 12 reps on this and same number of reps on the hanging knee ups and this will after this we'll be calling it a day So take my hand, join the army of the shadows. Going harder, we are more than numbers. Standing in the same. Going louder, we are all one color. Standing in the way. We're done with the weight training session. Post weight training, I always like to end off my sessions with a little steady state cardio if I have the luxury of time. My preferred medium of choice is always the incline treadmill walk. It falls under the bracket of LISS, low intensity steady state cardio. This keeps your heart rate burning for a prolonged period of time at a certain level, at a low intensity. So you can do this for a long period of time as well. And this helps you to get your this helps to get your heart in a fat burning zone so to speak post workout and this always works wonders for me whenever i get leaner it's always when i for my body type when i get to do more of the incline treadmill works post workout so i'm going to be doing around 12 minutes or so at a 12 to 14 percent gradient at a speed of around 5 to 5.5 kilometers per hour so enjoy the time lapse and i'm going to see you in the next one hello just by the way don't forget to like, share, comment and subscribe to the channel. Turn on the bell notifications. Me and Shashank are working very hard to put out new content every single week for you guys. So we'll make sure you won't be disappointed.